My prior employer decided that he wasn't going to pay me all the money that was in my savings account and retirement account and profit sharing account and because he didn't want me to go into business. I wonder if I'm going to make it. And I thought through all the people who believed in me and invested in me, were they all going to be disappointed or not? This became the major critical challenge to my whole operation. Could I succeed in being a multi-store operator? I stood over my daughter all by myself and I looked at her and I could see that she was dying before my very eyes. What are the elements that successful business leaders have in common? What values help assure success in today's competitive business environment? Join us as we explore the lives of some very successful business leaders. Welcome to Secrets of Success, the program about people of strength, people of persistence, people who are successful in business. These are their stories. You've been on the road a while. You're pressed for time, but the car needs gas. A sandwich and a cold drink sound pretty good about now, too. No problem. Just pull into a gas station convenience store. They're on just about every corner. But how do they get there? Are they all the same? And who runs them? Well, we know of one man who got into this particular business with hard work, persistent research, and innovative financing techniques. He's grown his business from one location to an entire chain in a relatively short time period. The growth of his Road Ranger gas station convenience stores has been nothing short of phenomenal. Meet Dan Arnold of Ranger Enterprises. When I was in uh, high school, my father was a soldier, and so we moved around a lot. And so my first job was bagging groceries for tips. And from that experience, every time we moved, I was able to get reemployment in a grocery store. And that's how I started to understand retailing. And uh, my father uh, did not have the means to allow me to go to college on my own. So what I ended up doing is uh, joining the National Guard, and they paid my way through school as long as I gave him four years in my life as a uh, soldier. And so when I went to school, it became obvious that a business uh, curriculum would do well for me, and I would do well in it. Dan's wife, Linda, also came from a military family. After living in a number of different locations, Dan and Linda finally met in high school. They were married shortly after graduating from college. We became a boyfriend-girlfriend while in, still in high school. And Linda was the first person that uh, really encouraged me, and she uh, believed in me and thought that I could attain and do the things that, uh, that I had in my mind. And Dan has always been a hard worker. I mean, when I met him in high school, he was working. And he just has this, it's not a tunnel vision, but it's a, just a single-mindedness that what he starts, he finishes. And what he starts, he already has a game plan of what it's going to be, and it has to be on a timely basis. When I was in college, a brand new gas station convenience store concept opened up you know, on campus, and I was quite amazed by it, watching it under construction. And I actually had to walk by it to get back to my apartment every day. So I looked at it, and I said, boy, I wonder if I could get a part-time job. I already had two, but I had some hours yet that I could uh, work. And so I applied to her for a part-time job, and they hired me because of my work experience. And so I went to work for him for two years, and from the inside was able to analyze the organization and see their weaknesses and strengths. So when I got ready to graduate from college, I went to see the owner, who was also the president of the company, and I said, gee, I think you need to hire me. And he said, uh, why do you think so? He knew that there was an opening that was missing in the structure, and he did. He explained everything he thought that the position would require, and not only that, but he also told, you know, Wally, um, the owner. What he, um, what he felt that he had to give. Dan's extensive business experience, combined with healthy ambition, quickly led him to a powerful position in the company. 
As I worked for this company organizing their store operations, it became obvious to me that that's where the money was being made. But the first major meeting I was called into as a young executive, the owner called me in and said, I think this is a good time for us to file bankruptcy. And I said, what? File bankruptcy? He says, yes, uh, we've, we're not doing well in our other divisions. And I said, rather than file bankruptcy, let's sell those other divisions. Let's get out of those because the store operation is making us money. So he took my advice. We sold out all the other things. We raised the money we needed so we wouldn't have to file bankruptcy. And then because everything else in the organization was gone but what I knew how to do, I became vice president and ran the company. Becoming a vice president at 24, it looked like Dan's future with the company had unlimited potential. But that wasn't the case. After being vice president of the company for two and a half years and running the store operations, I was able to be hands-on because the owner didn't really understand the retail operation like I did. So I got to make decisions and uh, planning uh, and strategy decisions well beyond my age of 24 at the time. And so when I became 26 years old, I began to think that this might be what I'd like to invest the rest of my life in doing, building a business or, in a sense, building an empire. And so I went to the owner and I said, I'd like to build an empire with what we have. And this is my, I mapped out the future of what I thought we could become. And he looked at me and said, no, I want to uh, get all the cash I can out of this to support my lifestyle. And I don't want to invest back into the business. So I quickly became very disillusioned. Once again, Linda proved a source for encouragement. Uh, I went to my wife and I said, what do I do with this? And she quickly came back and said, go on your own. Start your own company. Build your own store. And I said, but how do I do that? I don't have any money. We haven't saved much. We've paid off all of our bills, but we only have $5,000. She said, you're smart and you have a good reputation. Why don't you see what you can make of that? However, not everyone was so supportive. My father and many of the people that I had worked with uh, as an uh, that were fellow employees weren't very supportive of the idea and uh, I think they really didn't understand what was driving me in my mind. You know family, friends, especially family because he was making a real decent salary and it was a secure job. It wasn't like they were going to fire him or anything um, so they felt fearful of us moving out on our own and I just felt a peace about it. I felt comfort about it. I felt that it was just meant to be, and I think Dan did too. Uh, when I was uh, younger, somewhere along the line, I heard somebody say something that stuck with me, and it said, opportunity only knocks twice in a man's life. And the first time it knocks, the, the, the person would respond by saying, it'll knock again. And the second time it knocks, they would be too comfortable and too set in their ways to answer. So this was the first time opportunity had knocked in my life, that to go into business for myself, and I didn't want to squander it. At 26, Dan Arnold set out to build his own business empire. With so little capital, the financial challenges he faced were substantial, and they were soon made worse. My prior employer decided that he wasn't going to pay me all the money that was in my savings account and retirement account and profit sharing account and because he didn't want me to go into business. And so I went to a old business banker, guy who was 78 at the time, and I asked him for advice and he told me, you don't have enough money, but if you're smart and you learn how to use other people's money uh, and have other people that support you uh, and want to see you succeed, allow them to financially back you in different ways, he said that you should be able to pull this off. Finance was obviously the biggest challenge to Dan's goal, but he found creative ways to overcome it. And so I went to a developer who owned a piece of property and I said, I think this would make an outstanding location for a gas station. He said, I've been thinking that too, but nobody wants to build one. And I said, well, would you build one and I'll rent it from you? And he said, I think that's a great idea. And he said, let me talk to my partners. And so he said, why don't you go talk to them as well? And so I had to make a presentation to them as to why I thought I could succeed and why they should build a building and make me the tenant. When the first store finally opened, Dan found himself faced with the biggest challenge of his career. So I had made all the deals and made all the commitments to build this store. And I would financially signed my life away. Uh, however, something very deep and dark was on the horizon that I had no idea was coming. 
and uh, it was uh, the first big storm of my life. And that was the fellow I used to work for decided that he was going to make sure I didn't become a success in business. So he bought the, uh, an old rundown gas station across the street and he just he put his name on it and said, I'm going to run Dan out of town right here on this corner in front of the whole world. And so the first day I opened, I put my gas price out front on, on my pumps and I opened the door up and said, we're ready for business. And across the street, they put their gas price 20 cents under mine. And there we started a gas war that I had no money to compete against. And so on we went for the next three months where every dirty trick feasible was thrown at me by this fella in order to prevent me from going into business and being successful. I think it was after the very first day um, and he may have called me up during the day. I don't, I'm thinking he called me at work and said, you're going to have to quit because I need you to come in and run a register. Challenge filled Dan with doubt, and he knew it would take hard work to survive. I wonder if I'm going to make it. And I thought through all the people who had believed in me and invested in me, were they all going to be disappointed or not? And I came back and I said, we are going to have to make some changes. And I pulled my wife aside and I said, we're going to make some changes. We're going to get rid of all of our cost of operation. We're going to go down to just four employees. And then we're going to get more aggressive and, and go after things that he, the fellow across the street, is not going to do. We're going to go after fleet customers. We're going to go after restaurant type customers. So we're going to build sandwiches. We're not going to be able to just go at this normal. We're going to have to figure out all the avenues that make us unique and make our offer to the customer distinct and make us more likable than he is just across the street with his price. And overall, what ended up happening is everybody in our whole city came to that corner to buy gas and he had lines going down the street almost a half mile long and they decided, well, that line's too long, we'll just go over to cross the street and buy gas. He ended up um, dropping gas prices way, way under um, trying to put us out of business, but it actually was God making everybody know where our store was, and it, it made our store. And it turned out to be a wonderful thing for me in the long run because I learned quickly the business from the grassroots and how to do it efficiently and how to make the customer happy. And because of that challenge, he actually made me much stronger. And today, whenever we're faced with a scenario where we have a new competitor or a new competition, we look at that and I go back to that day and I said, that competition, no matter how hard it was, it made me think smarter. It made me a better businessman. It made me more competitive. And so I always look now at competition as an opportunity for us to become better at what we do. Dan's commitment to strategy and planning soon enabled him to effectively grow his company. So we opened our first store in 1984 and from there we went to our second store and then our third and that's when we had the difficulty of how do you become and operate a multi-store operation with great distances between each store, at least a half hour between each store. And from there we went, after we had mastered that, we went and we started adding stores in rapid succession until in 1989 we had opened up now our eighth store and we were a $50 million company. And at that time me and my wife started to analyze where are we going with this and what is there going to be our future in the whole development of stores and had we reached the level or did we want to continue to run out the store numbers and at that time there were some fundamental changes in the industry and the main thing was that was going on is cost of funds or interest rates were re declining so I was really for the selling part of it and everything Phillips coming to him it just all worked out that the sale went through smoothly and I don't know if he mentioned to you but right, this was right before the Kuwait thing I want to say that it was just maybe right before or right after because Phillips quit buying. But selling the company created a situation Dan didn't expect. So at 33 years old, I sold everything that I owned and I was now where I thought I always wanted to be, everything in cash. And for the first time in my life, I had not only cash, I had large amounts of cash. And I said, okay, what do I want to do with my life? Well, something else major had happened at the time as well, and that is my partner, my wife, had just had two baby girls, so two beautiful twin daughters, and now her life had been overwhelmed with the care of these children. And so I was now not only a man without a business, but a man with 
basically nobody to share his life with. When we return, a near tragedy dramatically changes Dan and Linda Arnold's lives. I stood over my daughter all by myself and I looked at her and I could see that she was dying. After I sold the business, I then became self-directed and to do whatever I wanted to do. I was in the position where everybody wants to be, which is enough money to do whatever you wanted to do and no responsibility. And you know something? I felt terrible. I no longer had an understanding of who I was and what, what my purpose in life was. In fact, I became uh, more and more empty each day as I sought what the meaning of my life would be. In fact, as I went deeper and deeper into other things, like I tried to play golf to use up my time, I tried to travel to use up my time, I kept coming back with, is this all there is in life? Is this all that a person can be fulfilled with? Isn't there more? Isn't there a greater purpose to my, pur to my very life? In May of 1990, something happened that would ultimately answer that question. When my daughters were born, Christina, the first daughter to be born of the twins, had a problem. In fact, she was dying, and she was instantly rushed to the emergency part of the hospital. I followed the nurses as they took her there, and when uh, I was standing over her, I could see the nurses were very concerned, and I said, what is the problem? And they said, your daughter needs a doctor now. She needs a surgeon. This child who had just come into my life was now, uh, I could maybe never get to know her because she was going to die. So being helpless for the first time in my life, not being able to control events, I called out to God and I said, God, would you heal her? And I prayed, asking him to intervene in her life. This is the same God that I really didn't know. In fact, I'd never really been to church, but I knew that he existed because I'd heard about him. And now I called on him. That night, I went down to the chapel in the hospital, and uh, my wife, not knowing what had happened, uh, only me and God had been witness to him saving her life. I fell on my knees, and I thank God for saving my child's life. Thank God for answering my prayer that day. So in appreciation to God, my father had given me a Bible, and so it sat on my den, and I'd always looked at it, and I said, to, because God had saved my daughter's life, I will read your book, God. And so I sat down and I read the New Testament. In fact, I read it three times in a row. Dan was surprised at how quickly his new faith brought change to his life. After I repented that night, what I found was something interesting was happening in my life. In fact, I, I started running into people everywhere I went that could help me in my new Christian experience. All my life I had never met a Christian, and now all of a sudden they're everywhere I go. And I found that God was leading me, and he was now involved in my life, and he was directing what was going to happen next. In fact, he was taking care of me and leading me where he wanted me to be. And of course he was concerned about Linda's spiritual future. And so I just basically prayed about it. I just said, God, if you're going to save me and you're going to want me to do anything, you're going to have to save my wife. And he did, all by himself. My whole life I've known about Jesus. Um, I was taken to, um, you know, I was taken to church. I was taken to catechism. And I knew about Jesus, and I remember when my father died, I used to pray to Jesus. We didn't know if he was dead because he was an MIA. And so I remember praying to him and asking him to take care of you know, my dad, wherever he was, if he was alive, dead, or imprisoned, and I remember praying for us at the same time. So I knew about Jesus, but I had never really decided that this I need to consciously do to follow him. So a fundamental change was starting to happen inside of me. As I was growing in the Lord and as I was learning about His Word, I was changing, and my whole business career was changing. In fact, my motivations for even going to work was changing each day. Before, I was motivated by a fear of poverty. I was afraid of failure. I was afraid to be poor. I was afraid that I might make a mistake and not have enough money. And I was interested in acquiring wealth from, for its own protection's sake, for, so that I could trust in it. But now I started to give away little bits of money, and I saw how God would use that gift, and he would change other people's lives. And I was seeing that money that isn't hoarded but given out 
under God's purposes, under God's design, was being multiplied by him, and it became a blessing to those that received it. And that was fun to watch. In fact, it was more fun than hoarding the money. And so I started saying, if I made more money, I could give more away. And now all of a sudden, in growing in the Lord, I was beginning to grow in my purpose and why I should go to work each day. And I started to develop purpose in my life and in my business career. Dan's new sense of purpose soon led him back into the gas station convenience store business. Today, Ranger Enterprises operates 25 stores, generating over $200 million in sales annually. Six new stores are currently under construction, with a store opening every two months. Ranger sells a million gallons of gasoline to over 50,000 customers every three days. There's a lot of things that have changed uh, since the Lord has come into my life, especially in my business career, because before I trusted in myself, now I trust in God. Before I tried to make things happen on my own, now I go to God and I ask, Lord, what would you have me to do this day? And I ask for his empowerment, and I commit the day to him and believe that he is guiding every moment of every day for me. I've worked with other Christian businessmen, and, and to be honest with you, especially before I came to Christ, I always thought the word Christian and the word businessman was an oxymoron, and even if there was such a thing, that that businessman would not be able to wear his faith on his sleeve. But I've seen uh, nothing similar to that here with Ranger. Uh, I work for a, a good, solid Christian man, and Mr. Arnold is one of the best men of faith I've seen. He's challenged my faith more than, than even my own pastor has challenged my faith and encouraged me to step out with more expressions of my faith. I think that every single bit of what we have, God has given us to do his work, every single bit of it. And what reasons does Dan Arnold attribute to his success? You know, as I analyze my, the secret of my success, I can see God's hand all the way back to the very beginning. In fact, I can see his direction and his guidance throughout my whole life. And now, now that I'm a Christian, I can see the fulfillment of all that he was trying to attain with me. In fact, I can see that God was dreaming about what he would do with my life once I surrendered it to him and how he would use me. And so today, the secret of my success is my surrender to God. And the more that I'm attached to his concern and his business, it seems like the more he's attentive to mine. A man of intelligence, a strong work ethic, an inborn talent for business, strong faith, and a compassion for people. That's Dan Arnold. And yet Dan Arnold would be the first to tell you that he's far from being a self-made man, that God made him all he is and gave him all he has. Thank you for watching, and make sure you join us next time for Secrets of Success. <laughs>